Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India class focuses on the active site of enzymes. We will look at what is an enzyme, what is an active site. We will try to understand why enzymes should be studied as a protein molecule, what happens at the active site and we will look at two models, the lock and key model and the induced fit model of enzyme activity. And we will see how the properties of an enzyme are associated so crucially with the active site. You must know by now that enzymes are catalysts for the biochemical reactions which take place in all the metabolic pathways of the cell. In short, enzymes help to convert substrates into products. So where does the active site of an enzyme lie? The active site is that region of the enzyme to which the substrate binds and where the catalysis of that reaction occurs. That means the active site is that important place in the enzyme where a substrate or several substrates get converted into a single product or multiple products. It is very, very important to remember that enzymes are protein in nature. Of course, there are few exceptions. Since they are protein in nature, they obey all the laws of protein structure, protein function and protein chemistry. For example, the primary structure of a protein is the sequence of amino acids which determines the final structure of a protein. Similarly, the primary structure of an enzyme molecule is crucial for the proper functioning of an enzyme. Imagine if there was a mutation. A mutation in any point of the primary structure of the enzyme could lead to an enzyme which does not function or functions only partially. So, the primary structure of an enzyme is very, very important. Then we know that proteins can fold into secondary, tertiary and even quaternary structures. This is important to us because the folding of the protein structure gives the final shape to the enzyme molecule. Every enzyme therefore has a definite shape and every active site on the enzyme also has a very definite and specific shape. This becomes important because whenever we say enzymes are specific in nature, they are specific because the active site of that molecule has a shape which allows only one kind of substrate to interact with it. It is also important to realize that there are several charges in the active site. These charges which you can see may be positive or negative. Where do these charges come from? These charges come from the R groups of the various amino acids which make up its primary structure. So you see now we have an active site on an enzyme which has a definite shape and it has definite charges. And why does this happen? This happens because the protein has folded in a very specific tertiary conformation. 
Now, this specificity of the enzyme as we understood depends upon the shape of the active sites. Now, think about something. If enzymes were so specific, why is it that two enzymes of the glycolytic pathway, glucokinase and hexokinase, why do they differ in specificity? The answer to that will come a bit later. Since amino acids make up most of the portion of the active site, any change that happens in the pH of the milieu or the pH of the surroundings of an enzyme is going to affect the charges on the active site. When the charges are affected, the functioning of that enzyme also gets affected. Therefore, we see that certain enzymes have certain optimum pH. Pepsin, for example, has an optimum pH at 2. That means it can only function when it is in an acidic pH. It can only function because the charges of the R groups at the active site are functionally stable at that pH. Therefore, we see how the active site is affected by pH. We have heard that when proteins are heated, they become denatured. So also, we know very well that enzymes can get inactivated when temperatures increase. Again, this is connected to the active site. When temperature increases, what happens to the protein? It loses all the non-covalent bonds, the hydrogen bonds, the inter uh, salt bridges, all that gi which gives stability to the tertiary structure. In doing so, that protein gets denatured. Similarly, when enzymes get denatured, they lose the configuration of the active site. When the active site loses its shape, it cannot bind to a substrate and therefore, we say that enzymes become inactive on denaturation by heat. We also know very well that as you increase the substrate concentration, the enzyme activity increases. However, a point is reached beyond which Increasing the substrate concentration is futile. Why does that happen? That happens because the active site can bind only to one molecule of substrate at a time. When all the active sites of all the enzyme molecules are bound to substrate, then the reaction cannot proceed any faster. Once again, it is the active site which determines the property of the enzyme, that is, enzymes get saturated by substrate concentration. Now, let us see what actually happens inside the active site. So, we are very clear that the substrate binds at the active site, that the specificity of the enzyme is determined by the molecular shape and structure of the substrate. So, let us imagine the enzyme as a very large tray in which various ingredients can pile up. For example, look at the diagram below. You have a very large enzyme molecule and you have two different substrates which are coming down and meeting in the enzyme platform. Suppose there had been no enzyme, what would have happened? these two substrates would have been floating around somewhere in the cytoplasm. Now, what has brought them together? It is a common platform, it is a common active site and that can only happen on the enzyme molecule. So, it is important to remember that the active site brings together two or more substrates. It also brings together cofactors, coenzymes, and all of this come in close proximity with each other. This close proximity is important because electrons can transfer from one molecule to the other, protons can transfer, 
there could be energy transfers and so on and so forth. When the substrate enters into the active site, the first thing it does is to form the enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme substrate complex at this point in time is a very transient complex which could dissociate and go back to being just enzyme and substrate or could move forward along with catalysis to form the enzyme and product. In this conformation of an enzyme substrate complex, several things happen within the active site. One is that there is a huge physical strain on the bonds which are there in the substrate molecule. That happens because the substrate has to fit itself into the active site. Now, along with the physical strain, there is also a chemical strain that happens and that happens because of the R groups which are charged and these charged R groups form hydrogen bonds with the substrate and when they do that, there is a chemical strain that also occurs on this molecule. So, now we know that when a substrate enters into the active site and what we call as binding of the substrate happens to form an enzyme substrate complex, we see that a strain has been created, a physical strain as well as a chemical strain. What is the importance of this strain? This strain that occurs on the chemical bonds of the substrate that helps the reaction to proceed faster. In other words, we say that the activation energy of the reaction has been brought down. As the activation energy is brought down, the reaction can take place faster and the product also can be formed faster. This is the importance of correct alignment happening at the active site between the substrate and the enzyme. If we look at the active site, there are two distinct models which, which are known to us now. The first is the lock and key model which was put forward by M. L. Fisher. The second is called as the induced fit model and this theory was put forward by Koshland. Let us look at both the models independently. In the lock and key model, we are told that the active site is a rigid inflexible shape and the substrate has to fit exactly into this rigid shape much like a key which fits into a lock. This helps us to understand enzyme specificity to some extent. For example, why does urease act only on urea and on no other substrate? It could be that urease accepts only urea as its substrate, lock and key. The second model is a little difficult to understand. Here it says that the induced fit model, the active site is not a rigid structure. It is roughly complementary to the shape of the substrate. However, when the substrate binds to the enzyme, the active site changes itself a little bit to accommodate that substrate. Let us look at this in a little more detail. Here you have an enzyme molecule where two substrates, a green and a red substrate have bound to it. Do you see those arrows? Those arrows indicate how the enzyme molecule can shift itself marginally so as to make space for the two substrates and allow them 
to fit snugly into the active site. This explains why enzymes like hexokinase have multiple substrates. Let us take this a little further. Do you remember this? I told you that enzymes were proteins in nature. And then when we say that enzymes can move, what we mean is that the domain structure of a protein architecture helps the enzymes to move a little bit and in moving they are able to create new shapes. That shape describes the induced fit hypothesis of active site structure. That also helps us to understand why certain substrates can bind to certain different enzymes. Another important fact about enzyme active site is we have heard of competitive inhibitors. What are competitive inhibitors? They are substances which are exactly similar in shape and size to the substrate. They bind to the active site, however, they do not produce a product. Instead, they stop the enzymatic reaction from going further. Why do competitive inhibitors act at the active site? Because they fool the enzyme into thinking that the structure actually is that of a substrate. The enzyme and the inhibitor can form an enzyme inhibitor complex and that complex can be pretty stable. However, as the concentration of the substrate increases, the inhibitor might be dislodged from the active site and allow the substrates to enter. So, this is one more application of knowing the active site structure that competitive inhibitors can be used to block it. A wide variety of drugs function in exactly the same manner. Being structurally similar to a substrate, they are often used to block the active site of an enzyme. Zymogens are inactive enzymes which can be activated under certain circumstances. Let us take the example of pepsinogen. We all know that pepsinogen is an inactive enzyme and pepsin is an active enzyme. How is pepsinogen converted to pepsin? Well, in the stomach under acidic conditions, pepsinogen gets converted into pepsin and then through a process of autocatalysis converts more pepsinogen forms into the active pepsin form. If you look at the mechanism of action, it is interesting to note that in pepsinogen, there is an extra peptide which acts as a flap. That little piece of red and green that you see on the left hand side is an extra peptide which keeps the active site covered. That active site therefore does not have access to the substrate and remains inactive. Under acidic conditions and autocatalytic conditions, this piece of peptide is removed. Once it is removed, the active site becomes accessible to substrates and now we say that pepsin is active. Therefore, you must remember that sometimes the enzyme prefers to hide its active site until it is needed. Can you think of where else you find zymogens? Yes, the blood clotting factors and the cascade of blood coagulation has a lot of zymogens which get activated only when they are required. And therefore, I conclude about the active site. We have seen what is an enzyme, 
we have looked at what an active site is. We have understood how important it is to remember at all times that enzymes are proteins. In doing so, it helps us to explain about how temperature and pH affect its function. We also have seen what happens at the active site and looked at the mechanism of bond strain, how that lowers its energy of activation and helps to form the product. We have looked at the lock and key model as well as the induced fit model and seen how there are changes in the structure of the active site which allows one substrate or multiple substrate to act with the same enzyme. I have also spoken about the properties of an enzyme which are actually attributes of the active site and that is specificity, the inactivity of zymogens which can be converted into active enzymes as well as that of competitive inhibitor binding. Thank you.